Molly. Today I'm going to read you a story called The Dragon That Couldn't Say No. Are you ready to listen? Okay, I'm going to read you the story. The Dragon That Couldn't Say No. There was once a princess who lived at the top of a very tall tower. She lived with a dragon with claws as sharp as knives. Every day a voice called from the tower, Who will rescue me? Oh, how I wish someone would rescue me. From time to time, the princess, princess came to the gate of the castle and shouted, Princess, I will rescue you. Each time the princess came to the gate, opened it, and said, Why don't you mind your own business? I'm fine here with my dragon. In fact, it's time for Luke to mop the floor and cook my meal. Go away. When the then the princess slammed the door and went back to the tower. Yes, it was Luke who called. Who will rescue me? Oh, how I wish someone would rescue me. Princess Gladys was a real pest. She never stopped shouting orders at Luke. Make the dinner, wash the dishes, sweep the floor, mend my dresses. The dragon always replied, yes, princess, of course, princess. Luke didn't know how to say no when he was very, really unhappy. Many years before, the princess was walking in the forest when she spotted a cradle. There, was, there were wild animals nearby about to attack it. The princess chased the beasts away with, with the umbrella. In the basket, she saw Luke. An abandoned dragon, baby dragon. She took him back to her castle. From that day on, Gladys did not nothing but give Luke orders. Luke would have liked to leave. He every day he started at the mountains far away. He really wanted to go and live there, but the princess had saved his life, so she. So he stayed with her hand and did something she told him to do. Once, one morning, Luke was woken by a voice calling, Help, Luke, help me. Luke, Luke went to the castle walls. Someone was kidnapping the princess. He laughed unkindly and said, Princess, you will be the perfect wife for me. The knight limped over to his horse the, and horse threw princess gladys on it onto it and rode it the dragon shouted i'm free i don't have to do what i'm told anymore i can fly far away from here at last oh but what about the princess i can't just let her be kidnapped luke had a good good heart he decided to he had to get save gladys flap flap luke Flew to the limping knight's castle. It was dark and dirty in, in a small room. Luke saw the knight dressed in smart clothes. The princess was there too, locked in a cage. She was wearing a wedding dress. She was wearing Luke hid behind a cupboard. The limping knight said, ah, In ten minutes we will be married, princess. Then you will make my meals, wash the dishes, and don my socks. I'm going to check if the wedding cake is ready. See you later, my love. The knight kidnapped, ki skipped happily out of the room. He hurried to the cage. The princess saw him and said, I'm so unhappy. Ladies, we have to get out of there, said the dragon. Gladys sobbed, I'm locked in, you, you get out of this cage. I'll have to marry that horrible knight, my life is over. Luke said, you don't have to marry him, there must be a way out. Luke blew flames on the lock, but it didn't melt. He tried to bend the bars, but he couldn't. We must find the key, said the princess, but where could it be? Luke thought for a moment. Suddenly he shouted, just now when the limping king left the room, he was skipping. He wasn't limping. And that's a bit mysterious. You're right, said the pr princess. Suddenly the dragon went out to the corridor. He spot another door. It was the knight's bedroom. Inside he saw a limping knight's armor standing in the corner. Luke 
Luke looked in one of the shoes, nothing. But in the other shoe, he found a big, heavy key. There, there was where the night captain. That was why he limped. The dragon went back to the. Went back to the princess. Look what I found, he said, showing the key. Gladys jumped and down for joy. Suddenly, there was a noise in the corridor. The knights were coming. The knight was coming back for the guests and servants carrying the wedding cake and lots of soldiers. Luke quickly put the key in the lock. Click. The cage door opened. Get on my back, said Luke. The princess climbed on the dragon's back and he flew away in the window. Stop them! yelled the limping knight as he burst into the room. The knights and the soldiers fired arrows at the dragon. They even threw the cake, but Luke was too far away. The dragon and the princess were out to reach. Gladys untied her hair and burst out laughing. It, it's so good to feel the wind on my face, she said. Now let's go back to the castle, Luke said. No, see those mountains over there? That's where I'm going to live. I understand, said the princess, smiling. Luke put the princess down in the castle courtyard. Wait, said us one last thing. The princess gave Luke a big hug. The dragon hugged her back. Then he flew high up into the sky. All the way to the mountains, he was free. The end. Okay, and this story, limping, the limping knight. How did the dragon know that the key was on the limping knight's shoe? Okay, today I read you a book called The Dragon That Couldn't Say No. Okay, thank you for seeing this video. Bye!